Hi everyone and welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, Senior Instructor at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's topic continues with Path Array in Revit, but now we will use Dynamo as the array tool. In our last installment, we showed how to do Path Array in Revit using massing tools. In this example, we'll be, we will be programming a small script or routine to be ran from Dynamo. Now let me give you a small heads up guys. What we will be doing is programming. This being the case, we must be accurate in how we follow the instructions on this video blog. If you have an error, just go back and look at it. It could be spelling, it could be spacing. You have to be very accurate, okay? So, with that said, are we ready? Let's go. Very well, in this particular example, we've already went ahead and defined a path using the model line, okay? <coughs> and then went ahead and inserted a uh, already preloaded for the, uh, for the, the uh, default uh, template, a tree, which is an RPC. As you can see, great birch, 10 foot. Very well. Now that we've got our items in here, let's go ahead into Manage, and in Manage, let's go to Dynamo, and launch it. Okay, as soon as it's launched, we can then go ahead and say New, and it will give us our little um, workspace. First thing we need to do is to actually go ahead and identify an object from Revit. So to that, what we do is we right click and we type in select. Notice what happens. You see the spelling? Select space E L E M to start. So you can see those options and you'll see select model element. This is the one we want. Very well. With that done, what we do is the first thing is pick on select. Then we come over to the Revit and we select the path. It automatically grabs that path's ID number. You see that? So the other thing that I want to do is I'm just going to move it here for now, but I want to then come in here into Revit again, select the path, and I want to register what the length of the line is. It's 123 feet, okay, and a half. I'm going to keep it at 123 feet. That's going to be crucial later on because that allows me to know how f how what's the maximum amount of divisions. Very well. Now that we've got that, what we need to do is let um, Dynamo know that we now have this element and we want to place it. So what we do is we right click again and in this little item we type in element and then we type in space and geo. This automatically brings up the geometry or element by geometry, which is this one right here. <coughs> so this is the one that's going to invoke getting that spline, which is right this one here, this spline into Dynamo by going this way. Okay, so now we have this uh, spline already set into our Dynamo. Let's go ahead and open this up a little bit because I want you to see a couple of uh, navigational tools. This one navigates the geometry. You see that? Which is uh, actually nice because we can then center this a little bit better and we can see the whole thing. And this one actually navigates the parameters, okay? And these are the parameters that we're creating. Parameter object uh, ID, parameter object get. Okay, so let's go ahead and place it over here and right there. Okay, the next parameter we want to invoke is the curve length. So for that, once again, we right click. This invokes the uh, the ability to select parameters. We s type in C U R V E curve. Uh, don't forget, its spelling is very important. Curve that dot L E G L E L E or L E G N T H. It doesn't matter because what we're looking for is this one right here. Okay, and we'll place it here. So what this is saying here is I have an element in Revit, which is aligned with this ID, which is now being brought into a uh, Dynamo, which is then going to be connected here to get a link. 
okay now that we've got that okay now we need to go ahead and create a number slider that will control the placements okay so we do right click here and we type in number and there's the number slider in that list so we select that okay now this is where that length becomes very important 123 feet point uh, 123.5 we're going to keep it at 120 okay so we'll come down here for the parameters uh, controls and we'll say the minimum is going to be one the maximum is going to be 220 it's a little shorter than 223 and I'm going to make the steppings every single okay so now we can see that this is going to be increasing numbers and, 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 and segments and lengths excellent so now we have the object and the way to control segments okay or divisions perfect now we're going to uh, invoke code that is going to allow us to ex uh, to tell dynamo exactly what we wanted to do so we right click again and we type in code and we select code block from here okay and the first code block that we're going to do is going to have to do with this one so we come in here and we select in there and the code uh, that we're going to write is it's the length we have to be spelling it properly divided by space now don't select the space that's there because that's a different uh, space that it's calling for just click outside okay okay it looks like we have something going on uh, L -E -Z, uh, oh that's because we haven't renamed this one so let's go ahead and select this one right click okay or rather double click on it and then space okay and accept and let's go ahead and redo this one okay let's go ahead and select it delete it and let's uh, right click again okay so we'll say code block okay it's going to be length divided by space click outside don't select it as I said before okay let's go ahead and length uh, space exceeds exceeds okay oh this might be the wrong forward slash okay there we go well okay that was you, you notice that what I was saying you have to be very careful about this okay so the uh, length okay for this particular object okay is going to be the curve so that goes to length okay and the space is going to be this object here so we're going to go ahead and feed it into there okay and if we go here we see that is one object in there right excellent 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 so now what we have identified once again is the object brought it in identified its length and then used it in, in a uh, formula here that we, it gives us the spacing so this space is going to be going ahead and dividing that that's what's really it's being said there with that now that we've got that done let's go ahead and go ahead and add another code okay and it's a code block once again this code block is going to say how to divide it so i'm going to say that it's the number zero multiplied okay by number whatever it is multiplied by space select outside okay so the number is this one right here okay let's go right there and the space is this one right here and if you notice there's already a list because of the amount of numbers that I've got okay so there's already a list of spaces beautiful at this point once again everything's working rather well next point is going to say that we're going to grab all of these divisions and we're going to place a point in each one of them so for that we go ahead and invoke a point oops gotta be spelling it right point spa uh, space at and here's by point which is the one we want okay oops sorry that's not the one and take that back right click okay 
and this is going to be point at segment length okay that's the one we want and there are many and you need to be very careful which one you select you have to be very specific okay so now we've got the point at curve and the links this item goes here okay click there and then this one here is the one that actually gets connected this one variable here okay gets connected to the curve that identifies the curve let me place it there and voila there's your dots almost there guys okay so now what we need to do is let's test it and see what happens okay let's go ahead and move this slider over a little bit and look at that okay and as we do that it's happening here in the actual Revit as you can see let's move forward great so now we've got it all divided evenly and we've got it all replacing uh, being placed uh, with dots at the division point now let's go ahead and replace the dots with some geometry okay so let's go ahead and do the following let's go ahead and make this a little bit tighter so we have a little bit more space to actually to play with okay let's go ahead and move it here nice to see the connections here okay and we go there okay <coughs> great now that we've got that done let's go ahead and take a look at the next step let's make this a little bit bigger and then we'll come back and like that and for now I'm going to take this and turn it into manual because we're going to be working here for a little bit so I just don't want to go back and forth so much showing you we'll show it show it at the end okay so now that we've got that let's go ahead and say um, let's go ahead and say family type okay let's go family whoops family types is one that we're going to need okay this identifies what we now want and if you go in here okay you will notice that the list of all of the actual uh, families that are loaded into the particular um, uh, project that this particular uh, script is at this point related to is loaded and we'll go ahead and look for our RPC which is uh, going to be the 10th footer let's go uh, the 10th footer there it is okay so there's my RPC okay now we go ahead and type in right click of course family space by and we select by point right here okay so now what we do is we connect point to point and family type to family type so we go in here click one and we come in here and click the other since we have it on manual you'll see that it hasn't changed here in the Revit project so we come over here and say run run is complete voila so now you see that we're able to create a path array using dynamo I would suggest very highly that you try to understand what this whole connection is about that's why I've been so very specific as to describing each and every one of the steps for you to be a little more clear once again guys you have to be very sharp with this if you don't and you have mistakes or errors you need to read those errors and correct them according accordingly okay this has been James Cuervo with Digital Drafting Systems thanking you for coming and watching our video blog Hoping you have a great, safe rest of the day. Till the next one, stay safe.